Our uh, text is from uh, the Gospel of John. John, the 20th chapter. And we'll, uh, we'll read verses uh, 19 through 31. Hear these uh, gospel words from the Gospel of uh, John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they're not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Would you pray with me? Open our eyes, Lord, that we might see you and the message. Open our hearts that we might receive and help us to believe in Jesus' name. Well, this morning's uh, scripture is uh, pretty long and there are uh, quite a few uh, uh, themes just uh, mingled in this long scripture. And as I uh, read it to prepare uh, it struck me that on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, and Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they're not forgiven. There were fearful people sitting together, doors locked, and Jesus comes in. <laughs> the doors are locked, and here appears Jesus. 
And he comes bringing peace. He comes talking peace. And he wishes peace for them. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It was, uh, wouldn't you say that this is perhaps uh, the most powerful statement ever made? Peace be with you. His peace to be with you. Today there's so much turmoil and so many things going on in the world. There's war, there's there are tornadoes and devastation and all sort of things that cause this trouble in people's lives. And Jesus speaks peace. And, and then he shows them his hands and the nail marks and he shows them his side. He, he shows them his suffering and his struggle on the way to and including on the cross. And in doing so, he teaches them that there is healing. Peace be with you. This first peace was, was meant to calm uh, and strengthen uh, the disciples and to help them get through this particular time. To, to, they were trying to forget the past. Just a few days ago, they had experienced the most horrifying thing in their lives. They saw uh, Jesus struggle, be beaten, and hung on a cross. They really didn't want to remember that. It's the things that uh, happens in our past that causes us to have fear. When I was growing up, I was probably uh, eight or nine years old. The first 12 years of my life, uh, we, we lived on a farm. And so it wasn't uh, down the street. The neighbors didn't just live down the street. They lived across the field or you know, down the road. We had uh, neighbors that were about a quarter of a mile from us, and uh, they had a huge uh, German shepherd. He probably wasn't that big, but because I was small, he just looked huge. And, and, and this dog uh, ran the neighborhood. Um, and uh, he, was, he was not aggressive or mean, uh, but pe he chased people's animals. And so people in the community were complaining because this dog would chase and attack their animals, you know, chickens. And, and, and uh, even in the past, they're chasing, chasing the calves. And, but, uh, so they, the owners tied him on a leash. Not a leash, it was a big chain they put him on uh, to keep him contained. And uh, whenever I was over to this house, I would go and pet the dog. This one day, I was, he was chained, and he hadn't been chained very long, but he wasn't in a very good mood. I didn't know that, so I walked over to pet him and put my hand out to put it on his head, and before I knew it, my hand was in his mouth. Uh, that was one frightening experience. And, and so from that point on, I was uh, afraid of uh, big dogs, especially big German shepherd dogs. Uh, I had this fear of dogs. I, you know, I mean, if, I'm, if I walk into somebody's yard or go to somebody's house and they had a dog, I wouldn't have very long. Because that was, this dog had put the fear in me. Um, but, but when I became an adult, I, uh, uh, I got a, I had an a, um, Irish setter. And uh, this Irish setter was, I got him when he was a puppy. He was the runt of the litter, but he grew up to be really big. <laughs> and he was really gentle and really loving and really protective and, and, and he changed how I felt and the fear that I felt for being around big dogs. And, uh, but it's the things that happen in our past that causes fear in our future and fear in our lives now. The disciples have witnessed a crucifixion 
And they were afraid that these Jewish authorities were going to do the same thing to them. And here they are, they're locked away in a room out of fear. And Jesus enters and he says, peace be with you. And he says it again. He says, peace be with you again. And this time, he's, he's telling them what's going to happen in their future. He's preparing them and getting them ready for what's going to happen in their future. He, he, he said, uh, the Father sent me, and I'm sending you just as the, as the Father has sent me. Peace be with you. I'm sending you to witness to everything that you've learned and everything that you've seen. And you're going to need peace and strength as you go. Peace be with you. He's sending us. He's sending you and me out to witness to others about who Jesus is and what he's done in our lives. We are to witness to those experiences that we've had with Jesus. And, and witnessing is hard and is tough. And people are afraid of witnessing, afraid of the rejection, afraid, that, afraid people will be like Thomas. They, they won't believe that they'll reject the message that you bring to them as you come to witness. And you're going to need peace. The peace of Christ to be with you. His peace. His strength to be with you. This peace is strong enough. But not all by itself. Because this is what he said uh, to the disciples. He breathed on them. He breathed his spirit on them and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So even with the peace and strength of Christ, we're going to need the Holy Spirit as we are sent and as we go. We're going to need Jesus' Spirit living in us so that we have the courage and the strength and the ability to witness for him. Well, the Holy Spirit is not really like Casper. The Holy Spirit lives and dwells in us. And it is because the Holy Spirit is in us that we can tell others about the love of Christ. It, you see, it is because of the love of Christ that we can forgive and be forgiven. When Christ was on the cross being crucified, he looked out on the crowd and he said, Father, forgive them. It was because he loved people that much that he wanted them to be forgiven for what they had just done to him. You, you, you know, I wish, my desire, my hope is that I, I can have that same love that Jesus has, that I can go through all of the hurt, the pain, the disappointments in life and be able to forgive just as Jesus is able to forgive. So, so we need his peace and his strength to be with us. We need his Holy Spirit in us to be able to love like Jesus, to be able to forgive like Jesus. Peace. Peace.